Hey, Bible readers, I'm Tara Lee Cobble, and I'm your host for the Bible Recap. Hey, Bible readers, I'm Tara Lee Cobble, and today we get to talk to my friend Lee McDermott. Lee is a pastor, one of the pastors at New Spring Church, which is a multi-site church in South Carolina. And I've known Lee for quite a while, and he is the pastor. If you listen to Prep Episode 2, you know that he's the pastor who challenged me to read through the entire Bible for the first time in my life. And that, that conversation changed my life. And most of the things that I spend my time doing D group, the Bible recap, all the things affiliated with that, they would not exist without that conversation. So he's been instrumental in my life and I think he's about to be instrumental in yours as well. So I'm super excited to hear from Lee and just hear what he has to say to us, some wisdom he has to offer to us about why it's important to read the whole Bible. So Lee, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> sure. Well, thank you. I, I, love being, uh, I love that this is a part of the story of our friendship, first of all. <laughs> We've known each other for so long now, but this is, I'm amazed at God at uh, everything that he has done through that one little conversation that we mm -hmm. have. But, but yeah, as, as you said, I've been one of the pastors at New Spring Church for the entirety of my ministry career. I started with New Spring the day after I graduated from college uh, more than 20 years ago, which was amazing. And my wife and kids and I live and serve in Greenville, South Carolina, which we, we love with our whole heart. So, yeah. You have served so many people so well through mm. not just your your ministry on stage and from the stage, but behind the scenes and even just the way that you minister to people in your life. Because at the time that we had that conversation, like you were just a friend to me. You weren't mm -hmm. my pastor. You weren't you were just a friend in my life. And so the way that you speak into people's lives and the way that you're speaking into people's lives now is mm -hmm. going to impact so many people. And so I'm yeah. thrilled you made the time for it. What a joy. Uh, yeah. yeah. What a joy. <laughs> Um, so you challenged me to read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. So when did you first read through the Bible and what prompted that? Yeah, I, I grew up in a Christian home, so I was always around the scriptures. Mm -hmm. A lot I can remember my grandmother giving me a quarter to memorize the Lord's Prayer or something like that when I was really little. <laughs> but I had never, in, in sort of the Southern Baptist context, I had never really gone all the way through it. You know, I'd, I'd never gone all the way through. So. I was called into ministry at age 19, started up with New Spring as a worship leader. I had been leading worship for a couple of years and still had not read through the entirety of the scriptures. And um, I remember I was probably age 24 or something like that, a couple of years into ministry. And the band at our church and I had gone to do a summer camp. And the guy who was like the camp preacher for the week, this guy named Adrian Dupree, um, he was challenging the kids, you know, to read through the scriptures. He, he blew my mind one night after one of the sessions. I think he could kind of tell something, uh, maybe I was trying too hard or something was off with my worship leading or something like that because we're, he and I were walking back to get dinner after the session and he just said offhand, hey man, you know God's going to hold you more accountable for what you say on the stage than me, right? And I mean, it, uh, kind of like struck me like I'd been slapped, you know, and I was like, what are you, t what are you talking about? I mean, this is terrifying. And he said, well, think about it this way. When I preach, people are seated, their minds are closed, they're weighing everything that I say, you know, maybe they're thinking on the inside. I'm not so sure I believe what you say, preacher, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. He said, it's different when you as a worship leader talk. It's like when you're talking, People are standing, their eyes are closed, their hearts are open, music is playing. Every word you say is going straight into their heart. Mm. Is are you comfortable with everything that you're saying? Have you read through the whole scriptures? And I was like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> and he's like, well, okay, so maybe you ought to just say, welcome, stand and sing, and you may be seated. Maybe you should just <laughs> limit what you say from the stage to that oh, wow. for a little while until you've actually read all of it. And at that point, I had only, I, I think I'd read most of the Bible, but like I hadn't read like the major prophets or some of those more obscure passages in the Old Testament. And so, I mean, that, that lit all the fire that I needed right, right there. So he was encouraging the kids at this camp to read through the Bible as fast as you could. It only takes about 40 hours. So he would say, you know, get a small copy of it, put it in your back pocket, read it at stoplights in between classes, that kind of thing. Take a pen along and highlight, underline, star. 
So I just, I chomped on that and <laughs> got into it. So at age 24, it took me, you know, a few months to read through. But, uh, you know, as when I finally got through it all, my whole life was changed. I mean, er- everything mm. was different. Um, so, I mean, that, that was a corner turning moment for me. I mean, it, it, uh, um, like so many doubts that I had about God completely just were blown away wow. by seeing God in the scriptures for the first time. So I was officially hooked by that mm. point. Man. So our stories have a lot of overlap, but they also have some distinctions. So for me, the words that Adrian spoke to you, you spoke to me, mm-hmm. and that's why I read through the Bible the first time. <laughs> and now we have all these other friends who are joining us. So what's crazy is what Adrian said to you, and then you said to me, and now we're saying to you, and you can go say this to other people that might change the trajectory of their whole life. Like, thank God for Adrian Dupree, oh, you know, yeah. right? Just oh, he's the, man. The, the ball that he set in motion with that. Yep. Um, but where our stories are different is that my first time through the Bible, I did not it opened up a lot of questions for me because I was seeing things about God that I'd never seen or heard. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember you challenged me on that um, in a good way when I read through the Bible the first time and I was like, man, I believe it's true cover to cover. I I don't doubt the truth of it, but I don't like him. Like, I don't like who I see God to be. Right. And do you remember what you said to me? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this pivotal moment in my life, and he's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> um, well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you don't like, you know. Um, but it is. Uh, you said, read it again. Yeah. And this time, stop looking for yourself. Wow. Start looking for God. What does He love? What does He hate? What motivates Him to do what He does? Yeah. Look for any names or attributes of His character that you see. Mm-hmm. You said you're reading it like a mirror, and it's not a story about you. It's a story about God. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think that's, uh, in, in some way, should perform prior to reading it through that first time. And I think that's the mistake that most of us make. But, like, that's what I had been doing, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, we read the Bible looking for answers. We, we're trying to, like, figure out all right, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And then you're met with these stories that don't immediately resonate with the real needs that you have in your life on that day. And you're like, why should I even read this? It's not, I cannot get anything out of it. If you shift to reading it as if it's a book that reveals God, Mm -hmm. everything changes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you find that like, maybe the things you were going in there to figure out weren't quite as important. Or if they are, the person you meet in those pages is ready to carry you through all of those. Yeah. Those moments, I, re- you know, thinking about th- those early times reading through the doubts that I had more than anything else were that that God cared for me. I think in my per- and I found that in the consistency of God's character from front to back. I think I had been to- sold a lie that the Old Testament, in particular, that the God of the Old Testament was uncaring, uncompassionate, mm-hmm. and did not have any mercy yeah. as compared to the person and work of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I found that to be completely false. That while there are some real harsh things in the Old Testament that you really have to wrestle with, I mean, you know, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him is in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The revealed name of God, like God says to Moses in uh, Exodus 34, the Lord, the Lord, compassionate, gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin, but who does not leave the guilty unpunished. I mean, this is so much about God's character, is forgiveness and compassion mm-hmm. and long-suffering and patience. And, and he is just as well, who does not, you know, he, he, he doesn't let evil get away with it, you mm-hmm. know, is another part of his revealed character. I, I, I was spellbound by the consistency in the person who was revealed mm-hmm. in the scriptures. So... But yeah, I mean, you know, the one of the things that Adrian told us during that week was that if you ever get hung up on anything in the Bible, keep reading <laughs> because the the Bible is its own best commentary. It answers most of its mm-hmm. own questions. And uh, one of my mentors along the way, too, said this phrase that what is in the Old Testament concealed is in the New Testament revealed, mm-hmm. which I felt like was that was a, a, real, was a very simple way of thinking about mm-hmm. it, but it was helpful to me. Yeah. One of the things you told me to do is, and you may not remember this, but you told me to read it chronologically, mm. which I thought was front to back. I did not know. I was like, right. old, new, yeah. how is that not chronological? And yeah. so to find a plan that took me you know, through the story as it mm-hmm. happened, 
it then makes some of God's actions make a lot more sense. Right. Because then when he is punishing someone for their sin, I'm not just dropping down in that moment. I'm seeing the 70 times he's forgiven them and be, oh, been yeah. patient with them yep. and then shown mercy to them even in his punishment, like right. just not punishing them what they deserve. Yeah. Um, but you don't see that if you just drop in in the middle of it. You right. have to read the story in the order that it happened. That's right. I mean, the Bible is a collection of books. I mean, mm-hmm. and that can be a little bit confusing as you see it all in one volume. And here's all. I mean, so you're you're right. I think that's that's a really really. That's one of the things I love about the Bible recap is that it helps to give that sort of timeline context mm-hmm. uh, for the scriptures. That is so so helpful. Yeah. And I, you mentioned some of the struggles that you had reading through the first time, and I had different struggles than you, mm-hmm. but I imagine uh, the people who are going to be reading through the Bible with us might have their own set of struggles. Yeah. Is there anything that you would, any advice that you would give to them about how to yeah. ha- prepare themselves for that? Or just like what you just said about keep reading. Yeah. And you'd said that to me too, mm-hmm. like the good, stuff, the good stuff is on the other side of the struggle. Oh, yeah. Um, so any, yeah. any other wisdom that you would have for a, a first time through the Bible reader. Definitely. The, I think the one of the things that uh, if you're reading the Bible through for the first time, sometimes you can get really hung up on, um, on re- like especially if you're reading a lot every day. Uh, and uh, reading a lot every day can make you feel guilty that you're not going in and doing a complete inductive word study <laughs> in every single line. <laughs> And the, the thing that I've tried to help people understand is like, look, you've got your whole life to read through this thing and to pour over it word by word. What, what really is essential in that first read through of the Bible is a cinematic overview. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've told people this before. If you think about the last movie that you went to see, you, you probably don't remember most of the dialogue from memory. Mm-hmm. But what you do know, what you leave with after a great movie is the story and you have fallen in love with the main characters. Right. That's ultimately what a first read through of the Bible gives you is this cinematic overview where the person of Jesus Christ is revealed. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest win is the the Bible ultimately is not meant to be a apologetic. It's not meant to be a, okay, here's proof of why Christians are right and everybody else is wrong. (laughs) It's not meant to be that. God intended this. He reveals himself through the scripture to reveal himself as a person you can know. And that, more than anything else, helps put all of these crazy things inside the scriptures into place and, and, and into context. If we read it from that perspective, trying to get to know a person, then you can give yourself grace about the time and about missing the details in one section, you know, because you've got your whole life to, to read back through it. So the, the thing that I would say, I mean, my, my issues reading through it at the beginning were really because I was reading through it so fast, it really was more about intellectual capacity. It was like, I'm taking all this in. It seems a lot for my brain. It was like stretching, you know, those mental muscles. Mm-hmm. And, and um, but I, I, you know, came across that promise, pro- promise in Psalm 19. that says, you know, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. God, I mean, in, I mean that promise essentially says that like reading the Bible will make you smart. It will stretch your brain into mm-hmm. wisdom. Those are the things that God was doing for me at that particular moment. I mean, it, it, it has promises for the heart and for mm-hmm. your emotions and, and all of those things as well. For, so for somebody who is reading through it at the first time, the thing that I would say is keep going. If you, <laughs> if you bump into something that you don't understand immediately, put a question mark there or a star and keep going all the way to the end and see if God doesn't, through the rest of the scriptures, begin to answer those questions mm-hmm. and, and uh, don't give up. The other thing that I, that I think is important is do it with friends. Read through the Bible with friends. Do it in the context of community. When you do it that way, it's amazing what discussion will reveal. Mm-hmm. Like if you're going through the Bible recap, do it and have you know meet up with your with your buddies for a cup of coffee or something like that and to be like hey can you believe you know this god shot or that god shot or the thing that that you know kind of came alive through it doing it in the context of community helps you to see all the different facets of of what's going on there and uh, you know it may, it will make it will keep you from feeling alone if mm-hmm. you if you have a a real serious question yeah. you know about something or having difficulty believing you know something that you're reading i yeah. remember you telling me the same thing, keep reading, because I think you said a question that you have in Leviticus might not be answered until Hebrews. Yeah. And so you've just got to, you got to press through and to not give up. I mean, how, 
arrogant of me to spend most of my life having access to the Bible and not reading it all and expecting to understand it all the first time I do read it. Oh yeah. Like that's just so arrogant to think right. that I would get it all on the first trip through. And right. um, I think you also pointed out to me that there's a difference between Bible reading and Bible study. Right. Which is sort of what you just honed yeah. in on there is like you're trying to get this cinematic overview mm -hmm. and there are places where, I mean I still read through the Bible every year. Yeah. I, I do the same reading plan for since that's the first time through. I've done yep. the same reading plan every year and I still learn new stuff, yes. which is so exciting to me because I want to be reading it every day until I'm in the ground yep. and I don't want to get bored. Yeah. And so to know that it's living and active and new stuff can jump off the page at me and new stuff does mm -hmm. and I relearn things that I'd forgotten that I knew, you know, yep. you, you pick up on those things over again and mm -hmm. um, it's just been just life changing to have my face in the word every day since you spoke those words to me in this building mm -hmm. all those years ago. Yeah, the, I mean, the fact that it can be new is <laughs> evidence that it's supernatural mm -hmm. to me. One of the, one of the evidences that, God, that the Bible is a divine thing, that it's not a man-made solely thing, mm -hmm. is that it is mysterious. There are parts that you can't understand, that you have to humble yourself when you, when you come to it, and the joy of, every single decade that you continue to read it, it is brand new to you. There are more things that come mm -hmm. to the surface. I mean, I think this is, a, that's a part of the, of the mystery of it and the, and the joy of it. I mean, Paul tells Timothy, all scriptures breathed out by God and profitable, teaching, reproof, correcting, training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, not lacking in any good work. I mean, the inspiration of the spirit, the fact that it's, it's breathed out by God. I mean, it, it sets it apart from every other book in existence. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I even think about, you know, if you think about motivations to read the scriptures, one of the things I, com I come back to over and over again is what Paul says in Romans chapter 10, that faith comes through hearing, mm -hmm. hearing the words mm -hmm. of Christ. The idea that whenever you open the page, whenever you open the page of the scripture, you put your eyes on the page, boom, some measure, even microscopically of faith, is being imparted to you and every mm -hmm. time you see it, it even if it's something you don't understand i just believe in my heart that when i when i see those things the holy spirit is using it for my good in some mm -hmm. unforeseen way making connections and yeah. building on things that i've seen and learned from uh, in the past so it's so cool what one of the you know when you think about the bible as a vehicle for friendship with god mm -hmm. um, I, I'm so grateful for Jesus' words in specific in John 14. He says, the Holy Spirit is going to come and bring to your remembrance all the things that I've said to you. If you think about the Bible as a collection of all of the words of Christ, mm -hmm. seeing them all, reading all of them, really puts into the hands of the Holy Spirit all of those words that He can bring to your mind at any moment. Most Christians, I mean, I know this happens to you all the time, but the the moment when you're talking to someone and a verse of scripture will pop to mind that that mm -hmm. person needs right in the mm -hmm. moment. This is, this is the thing that reading through the Bible does for you in partnership with the Holy Spirit's work inside your body in a moment like that. that if, if you have seen all of those words, if you've read through the entirety of, those, of the scriptures, um, God is, it uses it for ministry and, and for your own encouragement. I mean, it's, it's just a spectacular gift mm -hmm. that God would reveal himself through that and give us the gift of the scriptures. And it's clear how much you value what God says to you because if you mm. if you go back and watch this, in this short conversation, Leah's already quoted probably half a dozen scripture mm. from memory that he has stored up God's word in his heart so that he can repeat it in conversation just like you were just talking yeah. about. That that's what happens when you dwell in the word, when you treasure the words of Christ. And I, I love the phrase you used it's a vehicle for friendship with God. Yes. How sweet is that? Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. just m makes me smile just to think about it, that yeah. this is the way we become intimate friends with God, yeah. is his spirit who lives in us ignites understanding of his word that mm -hmm. he's given to us. And that through that process, we just, we get to know God better. We fall in love with him more. Yeah. That's just a gift. It is. It's what we were made for. Do you think yeah. about in the beginning, there was man and woman with God in conversation, mm -hmm. in deep knowing. Mm -hmm. And in the end of all things, when all has been made new, again, a new heaven and a new earth, there will be men and women with God in friendship, in conversation. Mm -hmm. And in this meantime, in the middle, mm -hmm. God has given us his word 
in order to restore and reconcile that. And he has given us the word, that, like Jesus himself is the word. And so we see him revealed in the pages of scripture so that mm -hmm. friendship can be rekindled. We get to enjoy the abundant life that, that God has for us now in that friendship. I mean, this is John 17, eternal life is knowing God, is knowing God. And I, I think sometimes, especially in our day and age, when there's so much noise in the world, political things, this and that, like the Bible can be weaponized for a political party, that grieves my soul mm -hmm. because that's not what it is meant to do. It is yeah. meant to help people see and know the king of kings of, of, of whose kingdom we are all citizens. It's a mm -hmm. higher thing than that. And um, I, I mean, it's, it's just such a treasure that God would reveal himself Truly. like that to us. Every other way that you can experience God speaking begins with the Bible. I think that is important to say. That when we think about hearing from God in any way, through a dream, a vision, some you hear God conversationally in, in the voice in your conscience, all of those things are never going to contradict the written the written word. Right. And that's where, you know, Paul can say, Don't despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what's good. That, that word prophecy can can make people nervous, but when you think about all ways of hearing God are anchored in the scriptures, mm -hmm. it, it helps everybody just breathe a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, and and understand that God intends to reveal himself to people. He's not hiding necessarily. For someone who is who is maybe coming to the Bible recap and they are far from God, they, they don't really have a relationship with Jesus at all. They're just curious. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's kind of the staggering thing for me that the Bible would be there and available for someone to encounter encounter Jesus, even with all of the crazy things that you read in the scriptures that are difficult to understand, you know, for that person who is just coming to it and wanting to know more about God, the Bible is a wonderful place to yeah, begin. Talk, talk to, say something to that person out there who yeah. maybe is like, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to do this Bible recap thing to help me understand it better. Right. What advice would you have for that person? I, the thing that I would, uh, for anyone who is, maybe kicking the tires on on Christianity or Jesus or anything and you want to come to the Bible to try and figure that out the thing that I would say is I'll look right the thing that I would say is say this simple prayer before you read anything in the Bible God if you're real will you please speak to me praying that prayer before you read the scriptures will open up your heart to be able to hear the God who is real who is revealing himself through those pages and in all the confusing stuff, I, I commend the Bible recap, you know, to anybody who is coming to it. Because what what Terry, what you've been able to do through the Bible recap is to help bring forward the person who is being revealed, the person mm -hmm. of God who is being revealed. That the God shot concept, the the idea that God is revealing Himself and the joy that that is in knowing Him is what He's trying to reveal. It's such a great resource as you're going along when you hit something that's difficult to understand and and it makes you want to close the book and not go back to it. Something like the Bible recap is just so mm -hmm. helpful to be able to help you keep going and to learn more and discover mm -hmm. more and to and to wrestle with it. So, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else, any other wisdom that you would have to offer to anybody? Anything else that comes to mind? The one thing that I would, for for people who have been Christians perhaps for a long time, but who have always gotten bogged down in reading the scriptures, one of the biggest, a couple of encouraging things that I would say. Um, first and foremost, if if you have found reading the Bible an obstacle because for some reason or another you feel like you're not good at reading or maybe someone told you you're not good at reading or you have some, some type of, of struggle there, the thing that I would encourage you with is that you may be the person that God wants to reach with the scriptures to have them in a powerful way to minister to other people because there is clearly a spiritual battle that's coming alongside mm. the physical one. I've heard this phrase one time that the enemy doesn't go to battle where there are no spoils. Wow. And if you have found reading the Bible mm. to be a battle, it may be that God wants to use you in a mighty way. And our very real spiritual en enemy is trying to keep you from the treasure that's inside those pages. And so I would just... Put that as fuel in your tank to persevere and to lean into it, to lean into the scriptures and just to see what kind of victory uh, you might have when it comes to that. The other thing that I would say is like if you approach a, a, a book of the scripture, maybe somebody told you that Leviticus was boring. I'm just going to tell you right now that is definitely a lie <laughs> from the enemy. 
uh, Leviticus and some of these other uh, Old Testament books that some people will tell you are just a slog or, or you know, are tough to read, look for Jesus in those pages and all of a sudden here comes the full color mm -hmm. of the situation and you will be amazed at what you see. Don't let anybody tell you that Leviticus is boring. It's the very word of God. Mm -hmm. And God has a treasure for you in it if you approach it by, by faith. I have to tell on Terry Lee this one, one story. There was a time when Terry Lee and I were having a discussion and she made some, you made a comment like, oh, I'm going to have to read Isaiah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew Isaiah. <laughs> Terry Lee used to think that Isaiah was, was the most boring, hard to understand book in the Bible. And I was like, Isaiah? <laughs> You mean the fifth gospel, the one that is revealing Christ in the Old Testament? What are you talking about? And so uh, I, I remember, I think your opinion about Isaiah has changed has perhaps changed. a little it bit. It has changed, yes, quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> so we got to break through those stereotypes, those things that yeah. we think about some books of the Bible. Because, I mean, there's treasure inside each one mm -hmm. of those pages. If, we, if you approach one of those books with a set of preconceptions, it just, you know, it keeps it locked. For yeah. you, and God wants to unlock it. So let's let, let's just let's come to the scriptures in search of Jesus and let the King of Kings, the the one who is just the most amazing capital P person mm. who exists, the one for whom we were made. Let's let him reveal himself to us. That's good, Lee. <laughs> Man. That is so good. And Lee was the one who challenged me to read through scripture the first time. I'm maybe challenging you to read through scripture the first time or all the way through the first time. And who knows what that's gonna be catalytic for in your life, what people in your sphere of influence that's gonna reach, what friends and family members who are far from God, who might see your love for that capital P person of God and that might ignite their heart to read the word. Like I had no idea when Lee challenged me that we would be doing this down the line. And, and now like New Spring Church, all the campuses are reading through the Bible recap this year yeah. together as a church. And it's just, it's coming full circle and it, the circle is spiraling bigger and bigger outward. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited that you're caught up in that too. And who knows how the Lord is gonna use you to encourage the hearts of other people once your own heart has been encouraged and you can feed out what's been given to you. And so I'm excited that you're joining us for the Bible recap and I'm excited that you're watching this video. And I also want to encourage you to check out, Lee has an album called The Hour that is available, where can they find that? Anywhere you get music. Anywhere you get music. Yeah. The Hour is an instrumental piece that Lee wrote that it's a great accompaniment for Bible reading or journaling or things like that. I just like to have it playing in the background when you're cooking dinner, anything like that, but it's, it's something that I use regularly in my life since the moment you created it. Mm. It's such an incredible piece to accompany your time with the Lord. So check that out mm. wherever, wherever music is is available. And before we wrap it up, uh, any any final words from you, Lee? Really just want to encourage church any church leaders who are listening to this. If you're a pastor or a church leader who is setting course for the discipleship strategy of your church's year, New Spring has been going through the Bible recap all this year as a church. When we encourage people to read the Bible, we encourage them to jump on board with the Bible recap and to listen to the podcast, to read the book. And uh, it has been so unifying. Mm. It has been, we have found that it has really made an impact on men's groups, women's groups, um, young, old. I mean, it has been such a unifier for our church to be reading the same thing at the same time, all of the people who go to our church. So I just commend that to any church leaders. It will really make a huge difference. FCA groups, student groups, I mean, like, you know, uh, wh whatever. If you are a part of a spiritual community and you are a leader, I would commend the Bible Recap to you as a way to get everybody literally on the same page. Uh, it's just, an, it's been a gift to us. I love that. That's such an encouragement to me to mm -hmm. hear how God's using it. So thank you so much, Lee. I'm so grateful for the words of wisdom and encouragement and challenge that he had for all of you. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that now. I cannot wait to read through the Bible with you and hear the stories of what the Lord does in your time with him. You're going to get to know the capital P person of God so much better as you put your face in his word every day. Mm. He's where the joy is.